shot. Come on. Yeah! Needs it. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the finals of the 2023 USBC Super Senior Classic. Mike Flanagan and, of course, Tom Hester joining me as always. As tonight, we've got four players in our championship finals, Tom, that are definitely awesome bowlers, and they've earned their way to be here. Yeah, started with 206 bowlers this week, 12 games of qualifying, down to 52, six more games down to 12, six more games down to eight couple of step letters this morning down to our final four yes sir we got a packed house here at sam's town we're very happy to be here we got two southpaws two right handers we'll take it out to the lanes as practice is just finishing up here rob gotchel our tournament director is introducing the players right now we'll take you through them our number four seed john marsala the southpaw from st charles Take us through the rest of the step ladder today, Tom. Well, I'm going to add a little bit to John. John's a two-time PBA 50 titleist. Uh, John won in Anderson, Indiana, and then John won the uh, inaugural Bud Moore Classic in uh, where the finals were in Bill Moore's home. He's a five-time regional titleist. John is going to take on Gary Ray. Gary, uh, by far our least experienced bowler here. Uh, when I ask Gary about accomplishments, no regional titles, no PBA 50 titles. Uh, as you watch, Gary, that just blows my mind, uh, as we talked about in the group step ladders a little bit. Must not uh, have bowled a whole lot because, man, does he throw it good to not uh, have any wins of that nature. Uh, Gary wanted me to give a shout-out to everybody at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl. Uh, that's where they announced him as, Gas as uh, Jasper, Indiana, but Gary's actually living in Columbus. Uh, Wayne and uh, Tom are, are Gary's coaches. The winner of that match... This man needs no introduction. PBA and USBC Hall of Famer, Lenny Borish. Lenny, five PBA 50 titles, two of them majors, won the PBA National at the Villages, the 2020 U.S. Open down in Lubbock. What, what more do you say? I mean, uh, Lenny's got it all going on. And our, one of our newest, I don't know if he's actually the youngest in the field, but one of our newest 60-year-olds, Jack Jurek. Jack, a two-time national tour champion and also a two-time PBA 50 champion. Looking to add to his resume today here as the number one seed. Yep, and the players today are going to be participating on an oil pattern that has been moderate to high scoring. It is the 2023 USBC Super Senior Classic oil pattern, 39 feet in length. 45 ULs is the oil per board. Volume oil total is 26.055 milliliters of oil. We are using ice oil on the way down and back. 15 mils on the way down, 10, a little over 10 on the way back. Using the multi-tank system here with the Kegel Flex machine. And it is a 3 to 1 ratio, symmetrical. And you'll see the players play around the second arrow. Higher rev players might get in just a little bit further inside of that. And you'll see the lefties playing outside of 10. Some of them even up around the 5th, 6th, 7th boards. Yeah, Mike, I thought the pattern this week was, was very good for a major championship. You saw several styles uh, competing, guys that like to hook it, like Pete Weber and Amleto making the, making the advancers round, um, several lefties, several righties, a, a really fair pattern. Um, John Marsala averaged 223 for his qualifying to make the finals here. Gary Ray averaged 230 through his qualifying and match play to get to this point. And uh, they're just finishing up their practice, as you can see there. 40 seconds of practice left. Gary Ray, by virtue of having the higher average, is technically the three seed. He is going to get to pick which lane he wants to start on, finish on, whether he wants to start the match, finish the match. Uh, that choice is going to be up to Gary. One of the things we talked about uh, all week as the bowlers came through this porch in 19, 20, 21, and 22 was our featured pairs. And uh, scores tended to get a little low, but John Marsala, well, two really big games when he was on this pair. So that's got to give John a, a nice, comfortable feeling as he 
takes to the step ladder here. Yeah, 258, 269, the two games from Marsala that he's bowled on this pair. Both players will be playing pretty similar lines, pretty much on top of each other before they move on to take on Lenny Borish. And then, of course, our number one seed, Jack Jurek. Rob Gottschall, our tournament director, with the final announcements and a round of applause. Everybody here watching. Here we go. Step ladder finals match number one coming up right here for you. We're right here on Bowl TV. Glad you're with us today. Want to say hello to everybody watching in our chat room, our community. Hello to all of you. Thanks for uh, taking part of your day to join us here for this outstanding finals of the 60-plus division of bowlers here, the Super Senior Classic, Samstown, Las Vegas. Gary Ray gets it started on the left lane. That's a good one. Yeah, Gary's throwing the attitude control. He told me he threw that. That's the only ball he's throwing all week. I did see him a couple of shots there uh, in practice throwing the purple hammer. Uh, Gary has committed to urethane. We're going to have to see how that affects John's ball motion as we go throughout this match. John told me yesterday, he said that uh, he thought the urethane might help him. Uh, he has seen some other players use urethane, and when he followed them on his side of the lane, he thought it helped his game. Two really good shots there for the opening shots. I can agree with that as I look at where they're playing. Uh, that urethane is probably going to give just a little bit of hold for John as he crosses over. About seven out to about four. Yep, that's um, right. You know, playing pretty direct. Gary's actually playing just a little bit straighter than John. Get a good look at the Samstown Bowling Center. So much history here. Before we get too far along in our broadcast, let's thank Samstown for everything they've done for bowling, hosting so many great events over the years. Of course, they were the title sponsor of the LPBT which is uh, now the PWBA. Thanks to Samstown for all they do for bowling. John, yeah, that one that one to me looked to be just a little bit left, got a little bit long. That could be urethane carry down. Uh, the ball coming in behind the head pin, and as we see, that was a ring seven as the four snaps around the seven. We just come off of our two group. A and Group B step ladders that we had for you here on Bull TV just a couple hours ago. That's how these two players have earned their way into the step ladder here. Good spare there from John. The top 12 players unique to this event were taking all the odd seeds. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11 all went into Group A. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 into Group B. They participated yesterday in six games within their groups of round-robin match play with 30 bonus pins. This morning we had our Group A, Group B step ladder, and now we are down to our final four here. Gary Ray, right lane, looking for a double. Gary's shaping the ball a little bit more there. Gets the light hit. Yeah, it looks like these two players have stretched the pattern a bit. It looks like their bowling balls aren't quite continuing through. The pins are coming off the end of the pattern like we saw in the group step ladder. Yeah, Gary crossing over about uh, eight there, just inside of John, getting his ball just a little bit further left than John, it looked to me, from like eight to three. So once again, as I said, we'll have to see how that affects John's ball motion. Gary with two really good starts. Get a good look at the approach here. We'll get to take a look at Gary's approach and form and style. Yeah, these bowling balls are going a little bit longer. And, and based off of what we just saw, Tom, in my opinion, that's an advantage for, for John Marsala because the ball he has in his hand we saw going high flush. If it's playing a little bit longer, he's still probably going to be right in that strike pocket. Yeah, uh, I could see this going both ways. Um, that one, I, I don't think Gary's – it was the ball motion. Gary kind of fell out of that shot. Uh, I think that's the reason that ball didn't make the, the corner. As we watched, Gary, he was very solid all week. Covers the three pin with no problem. John Marsala had a breakout season two years ago. I believe it was on the PBA 50 tour. This last season didn't go quite the way John wanted things to be. He decided not to bowl the last couple of events. He worked on his game in the wintertime and in the spring. And I can tell you right now, this is about as good as I've seen John throw the ball. Very fundamentally sound. Looks good out there, and he feels good. That one, a little bit inside a target. Doesn't get the break. Does not break out the split, leaving the 4-6. 
I'm a little shocked by that ball motion right now. That might be the first errant shot we've seen John throw today. I believe that was just an errant shot. And any time you make it to a step ladder like this, it, the nerves kind of come into play a little bit. You think about things a little bit. It, we're on a live broadcast here online. It's not television per se, but these games, Tom, you've bowled on television. You've won on television. The games just go by so fast, don't they? Yeah, the games by, go by so fast. You don't have, I mean, it's it's really, really quiet in here. You don't have any anybody else bowling to, uh, to create the ambient background noise. That's a pretty good shot from John. Yep. Gets the light swisher. Yeah, and that's a good sign for, for John right now, having the light mixer come in. Especially after the seven pin. And we've seen that hit work well for both right-handers and left-handers at this year's Super Senior Classic. Yeah, that light mixer, I'm going to say, you know, as I sit in the booth and I'm getting ready to compete next week, I'm going to keep that in the back of my head that the light mixer sure has been carrying very well. Yeah, of course, the Senior Masters on tap here at Samstown. Back-to-back -back events here. That looks pretty good. Really, yeah, that really. was perfect. The nine tilted out of there. Great adjustment there. Whatever Gary did there, that looked really good. Well, I just think he stayed in balance. Uh, you know, the shot before he fell out. Watch here. See how well he, how long he holds that. Yeah, both of these players are staying down a good amount of time, at least until the ball exits the pattern. And you see the arm out for balance. Really pay attention to that, everybody at home, on Gary's on this next shot. Watch his right arm. It's out for balance. It's a very quiet arm. And that's what you want to do. Yeah, that was, oh, is it going to get it? Oh. They do have slow racks here. And with the electronic tr triggering system for the rake, um, and you see this more when, when guys throw it hard and the younger players, obviously, but when that rake comes down very quickly and it takes a long time for the pin setter to cycle, you can see pins sometimes bounce off of that rake and go and knock down a pin, and that's perfectly legal. Yeah. Good spare there from Gary. Gary's a very good spare shooter. Folks, we also do have another member of our broadcast team. His name is Chuck Ritchie, and he may be checking in throughout tonight's broadcast with us here this evening. So if he sees anything, I see him down there snickering. He's, uh, if he sees a ball change or anything he'd like to add, feel free to join us, Chuck, at any time. All right. I will say that uh, Ray seems to be playing the uh, right lane a little bit slower on his ball speed. That's a really good rebound. There's a messenger for John Marsala. Slapping it out. Much better shot. Look at the extension here. There we go again. Seven out to about four. His last shot that 4 6 on that lane was much more up the lane. I believe just bad execution. But John has bounced back with a double after the errant shot. Yeah, you know, if he strikes here, it'll be a two-pin match. 257 max for Marsala. 259 max for Gary Ray. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, wow. He kind of kind of scared me there. He looked like he didn't like it. That ball came up dead flush. He either walked out of it because he knew it was good or was going, oh, please hook. Well, kind of fooled us. John definitely doesn't have a, a what we would call a cranker or even maybe even a tweener. He is a stroker. He throws it right up the boards. And on that one there, I think he got his maximum amount of revolutions on the ball that he can possibly get on that one. And it really went through the pins well. But it did look a little bit different. Take a look at Gary. He's also got a very quiet head as you watch him go to the line. Very balanced. Look at that. Pretty good shot. Just a little pin carry here. A little pin carry problem here. 
probably not a, a targeting issue probably you know just a little bit of a of a release issue you know maybe a little bit of a squeeze factor actually being on a live stepladder finals you know you just you're just a little bit more tense than you are when it's just qualifying moving across the building Good spare there. Yep. What, choosing uh, both players choosing to use a uh, plastic ball at their spares, and and notice that you know they're not throwing it much harder, as you alluded to in the, in our group step ladder. If you happen to join us for that one, just nice and easy, and that's a good tip for everybody at home. Use those use those uh, plastic balls at your spares. Yeah, that's one of the things. A lot of people say hard and straight at your spares. I, I'm okay with firm and straight. It doesn't need to be hard. When you try to throw it so hard. Um, you get out of balance. You get out of whack. Uh, you don't really need to do that. Just throw it straight, hit what you're looking at, and you're going to make your spare. A couple of Midwest guys here, Indiana and Missouri, represented. That's pretty good. Oh, oh. six into the eight. After a couple of seven pins, tried to get that one up a little bit higher into the pocket. It looked like he rolled it right into the lane. Look at that. He got it down real early, almost like putting it on a glass coffee table and trying to get it not to shatter. He put it right onto the lane and wanted it to read so he could carry that seven pin. Crept a little high. Good break. Yep. We See, got a match here, Tom. Yes, we do. 248 max for Ray, 257 for Marsala. That's a pretty good shot from John. And that's the hit he carries. That's a patented John Marsala hit there. Just a little high in the pocket. And the six last to fall and not a problem at all. We'll take a look at this one in slow-mo. Look at this. Look at his arm. His arm also out for balance. Stays down, stays down, raises up as it exits the pattern. Collapses everything on the right side of the lane. A little fist bump for good measure there. Asking for that one to push. Yeah, a little loft on that one, uh, which I believe will delay hook. Watch the loft on this one. Seems like a little bit more. I don't know if he hung up in it a little bit, but definitely 10 back. Good shot from John. He's feeling pretty good out there on the lanes. He's got himself a five-bagger. There's a spot where the urethane carry down from Gary might have helped John there. Both, both guys are throwing reactive there. Maybe that ball doesn't hold. So Gary here in the eighth and the ninth can apply some pressure here to Marsala, but he cannot be shut out. Marsala cannot be shut out, I should say. Got really quiet in here, and um, Gary's uh, taking his time here, some composure here, getting reset. Yep, nerves going a little bit, hand got a little bit wet, did the right thing. Step back, dry that hand off. Important shot in the match here. Mm, oh. Unable to trip the six. Pretty good shot. Gary's been all over the pocket. Yeah, we've really only had one Aaron shot this whole match. Uh, I got to believe that was an adjustment to try to get up into the pocket more, to try to get that seven out. Unfortunately, a little bit too high and Gary doesn't get the trip on the six that John did. So let's paint a picture here. What kind of drama do we have now? Let's see. We've got uh, one, 168 max there in the eighth frame for Gary. If he strikes in the ninth uh, and he struck out in the tenth, he could get to 228. Is that correct, Tom? That is correct. Okay. John Marsala can still bowl 257, as you alluded to. Yep. So, so what would need to take place here for, for John to open up a door here for Gary? Uh, an open frame? Well, John needs to, th if he throws one more strike and stays clean, if he goes spare, spare, he's only in the 220s. Gary sent that one just a little bit wide, gave that one a little more room and does not come back. Leaves the three, 217 now the max score. Yeah, I believe that 
you know, just a little bit of an over adjustment. Not an awful shot by any means, but uh, the urethane balls, when you, you know, for a lefty, when you miss a little left, not going to have quite as much recovery as a reactive ball. Gary does make the spare. Nice jo clean game for Gary. Yeah. I mean, he, he, you hate to run into a buzzsaw like Marsala has been here because, you know, 217, clean game. If he were to strike out, you know, a lot of times you'll take that. But uh, the way the lanes have developed and, and the look that John Marsala has, particularly on this pair and how he's bowling right now, I kind of thought John Marsala might throw 230, 240 at him to, to potentially need to, to win this one, maybe be in the 250s. Yep, John, just go make one more really good shot. That's that, it. That is. I don't know, just from my vantage point, it looked like John might have moved a little right with his feet, maybe like a one and one to the right. And that was just a touch slower as we see 15 and a half there. He was almost 16 the shot before. Okay, so maybe move right a little bit and softened up potentially, trying to open up the oil pattern a little bit. And remember, no more lefties after this. Marsala will be the only traffic on his side of the lane. John Marsala, he is uh, rolling right now. He yeah. will move on to take on our number two seed, Lenny Borish. Take a look at that shot again. That seals the deal. Yeah, John going to switch out of his phase two here. Very smart play. He's got a couple of free shots. Uh, when John's got out of the phase two, he's went to a hyped pearl. That's what John is grabbing right now. He did that in the group step ladder once he had it locked up, and he did not miss with this ball. It's, it goes a little bit further down the lane. Very comfortable using it. Yep, a little bit quicker off the spot. Yeah, he's got a good one-two combo here as far as a ball progression here moving forward in tonight's step ladder. Yeah, John, uh, John could be very tough to beat here. Into the 250s with an open. As we mentioned, John really likes this pair. Something about getting on a pair and getting comfortable. Very what nice a game. game. What a game for John Marsala. 257 up on the board after the open frame. He said, you know what? I got an idea. Let's throw the back nine. It's not bad. It's a good plan. Now if you can just get rid of that Aaron shot in the third. Hats off to Gary Ray. He bowled excellent this week. He beat a really tough field. 206 total players took to the lanes. Gary is going to come home fourth and receive $4,000 for his efforts here this week. A nice payday for Gary. Yeah, and a good start to the Senior Masters for Gary. Gary will be competing next week. All four of these bowlers in our Step Ladder Finals will be competing in the Senior Masters starting next week. Gary, with a nice thank you to everybody. One of the nicest guys out here on tour. I'm a fan. I'll tell you right now. I mean, to, to get up here in the step ladder here and, and have this moment, you talked about he, he doesn't have a lot of accolades, probably the least decorated player on tonight's show. He was around the pocket all night long here, all night long, this guy, all over the pocket, and uh, just, just ran into more score. Yeah, the only, I would say, well, other than that one, that was obviously an errant shot, but it doesn't matter. The only maybe errant shot was the one where he left the three pin. Other than that, I'm going to say w what happened to Gary today is he probably step ladder, just a little bit of tightness in his hand, not quite as loose and relaxed, so the ball didn't, uh, didn't go through the pins as good today in this one-game match. Final score, John Marsala, 257, Gary Ray, 207. Well, Chuck, what do you see down there from the lanes? 
Well, uh, I see the that the uh, they did stretch out the left side a little bit. Um, you saw Mark, Mr. Marcella go and uh, start lofting the ball just a bit, just to get it over it. Um, I, he he's all by himself now, and he just he just went to that. Uh, he just switched balls, and that ball looks pretty good to go for at least another game or two. So. We'll see how it works out for him. Yeah, I don't think that he'll actually switch balls. I think he'll stay in that ball. He just knows that he has that ball as a progression. Um, that's just what I think is going to happen here. But we will see. Jack Jurek coming over to take some practice shots now. Jack actually just 7 10 on his first ball. Well, if I can uh, if I can stay in range, I'll see if I can get away with uh, Mr. Marsala. Yeah, it doesn't like that pole over there, Chuck, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you're near that pole, we get a little, uh, we get a little uh, mixture there. Yeah, I remember from last year, you gotta gotta stay away from the poles, get up on the approach, and you, <laughs> you should get some pretty good reception down there. Test, test. You got me. Wait. Hello. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work, Chuck. Anytime you're uh, underground in a casino and bowling center down here with all of the uh, networking cables that there are around here plus all the other things we have plugged in sometimes we get a little interference with that wireless mic so uh, Chuck you'll have to stay closer over to here and let us know what you hear from John maybe before the next match but Lenny practicing and Jack practicing of course Jurek our number one seed Boris the number two seed both led their groups group one and group two that we saw participate yesterday in the match play they did not have to make it through the group step ladders earlier today and that's how they were awarded their number one and number two seedings yeah jack getting the number one seed by virtue of being plus 897 an average of 232.38 for jack lenny gets the number two seed lenny averaged 228.96 he was plus 845 these two guys battle it out for the lead. The last two rounds of qualifying. Of course, Mike Diaz. Shout out to Mike, our day one leader. Lenny and Jack. Been battling out all week. Expected nothing less than these two guys to bowl for the title. This week we had 300 games bowled by Jack Jurek, Kevin Croucher, Walter Ray Williams Jr. in qualifying. Kerry Painter had one as well, and Amleto in the cashers round. Yeah, guys, I just talked to uh, John Marsal, and he said, "Yeah, he said uh, Gary Ray pretty much set him up for the rest of the day, built a lot, nice little shim for him." Uh, he's going to stick with that phase two for a little bit, but he does, he does like that step down ball. Yeah, yeah. that hype, hype. What was it? The hype, hype pearl. pearl. Hype yeah. pearl. He's, yeah. uh, he's, he's got a good look for the rest of the game. Yeah, I said yesterday, Chuck, that that the way Marsal is throwing the ball and how well he's matched up on 19 and 20. His last three games now, he just bowled 257 with an open frame. By the way. Uh, 258, I believe it was, and 269 are his last three games on this pair in this event. So I, I don't see John bowling less than 230, uh, but obviously Lenny Borish here is capable of bowling three bills at any given time, and Jack Jurek has been just a cut above the rest of the 206-player field uh, as we've seen throughout the rest of the event here. So it's going to be a good one here coming down the stretch where you have the three best players that are matched up the best on this oil pattern. The best of the week coming up right here. A couple more uh, practice balls. We see Rob Gottschall, tournament director, down there figuring out who's going to start on which lane. And we'll have our uh, semifinal match coming up for you right here on Bowl TV. Yeah, something to, to pay attention to. John in his first match was bowling Gary Ray. Gary, you know, basically first time in a stepladder like this. Uh, not for Lenny. You know, is John going to tense up thinking that he's going to have to bowl a higher game uh, because he's bowling Lenny? And can John, you know, keep those emotions in check and, and bowl a good game? Not saying that John is scared of, of Lenny or anything, but anytime you're bowling a guy like 
Lenny Borish, you you have to expect that you're going to have to perform at a very high level to get the win. Tom, we love everybody out here. Let's face it. You and I, we really have no favorites. But we do have people that we have been around a lot in, in, in our bowling careers, whether it be on the lanes, off the lanes. We get to know people. I know you and Lenny are very, very close. I know when he was inducted to the PBA Hall of Fame just a few months ago, how emotional you were. You guys are traveling buddies. You guys are competing against each other. I know this is a special one here for you with Lenny finishing runner-up last year. I know you'd like to see Lenny, Lenny get this win here. Yeah, I mean, obviously I like I like all the guys that made our stepladder. Um, got a very close tie to Jack Jurek as well. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm rooting for Lenny. Uh, Lenny and I go go way back. I'm his chauffeur. I do his laundry. You know, I mean, we, <laughs> we hang out on the PBA 50 tour. And, of course, I set that up because John Marsala being a St. Louis guy and me being from St. Louis and, and knowing the work that John has put in his game and a St. Louis legend that, uh, you know, never really bowled much PBA stuff but really broke through on the PBA 50 career, and he's a great barbecuer. The guys on the PBA 50 tour, this guy barbecues for everybody. He makes great barbecue, so I'm pulling for the barbecue man right here, John Marsala. Yeah, John, very accomplished. As I said, two PBA 50 titles, five regional titles. John can certainly play. And uh, battling 10 pins and seven pins from our lefties, righty and lefty here in the first frame. Yeah, and, you know, uh, I, I like that shot too there out of John. I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. I think it was a good opening shot. But, you know, he's been sitting for a little bit. He could practice down the practice pair. But... Um, coming back over to the championship pair. You know, we've seen in these last three games where he's bowled 260, 250, 250, he does not get off to a front six, front seven start. He kind of starts a little slow and finishes the game. Yeah, and to, and to, to add, <clears throat> I said that John might be feeling that he needs to bowl a big game because he's bowling Lenny. Well, I'm sure Lenny feels the same way. Absolutely. Because he just watched John bowl 250 on this pair. Yeah. So Lenny knows that he's got to bowl a big game as well. And Lenny does his homework. I know he goes back to the hotel room, and I'm sure last night he was looking over the scores and looking what pairs guys hit and said, oh, geez, Marsala. <laughs> he likes this pair. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. Go. That looked a little further left in the laydown where it crossed and where it exited the pattern, but it still hooked up nicely. Let's take a look at it again. Yeah, he has moved a little bit left there. Yeah, because we saw him actually move a little right and slow up and open up the lane towards the end of the last match. Now that one there did look much more direct and online. Yeah, that was basically 15 and a half. I'll have to pay attention to the speed, see what kind of adjustments John's making there. Lenny looking to match. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that one's very good. I, I can particularly remember Lenny coming through these lanes uh, when during qualifying, and he bowled a big game also on this pair, and he was using, I believe, a, a Nova, I believe was the ball that he was using uh, from Storm, which is a big ASIM that's very tumbly, and he didn't feel like he threw it that well on this pair. He was kind of spraying it around a little bit. His release wasn't perfect. But today he looks like he's got everything cleaned up. Yeah, Lenny has chosen to use a reality here this first match. Shaping it just, oh, wow. My goodness, that was a really good shot. Six pin right around the 10. Get another good look at it here. I, I don't know what else you can do. Uh, I really like that shape. I like everything about that shot except the result. Yeah, easy to sit back here and say, okay, well, you needed to start about six inches sooner, and then you would have got that 10 out, right? Because it looked like he executed just about perfectly. And how about the left lane right now being a little stubborn for both players? The right lane being stubborn for Marcel, the left lane for Lenny is what I intended to say. And the reason why I mentioned that is because uh, of lane choice there at the beginning. Lenny obviously had lane choice. 
and Lenny uh, elects to, to finish on his good lane thus far through three frames. That one was in a little bit. That's the Marsala hit right there. Yeah, yeah. That one just a touch quicker at 15.7 as opposed to 15.4. So we get a really good look on this lane from the lefty. Seven out to, oh, five, six. He's not, he's not bellying the ball very much. Uh, John's been carrying that high hard one. Gets a good break trip in the six. Let's see if John stays further left. Maybe John's playing these lanes a little bit different. Playing further left on the left lane. Sure looks like it. Roll, roll. No, nope, does not get there. Does not get the seven out. Hit pin at it. From our cam review, it's hard to tell. But it sure looks like John just a little bit further left on the left lane than he is on the right. Once again, two excellent spare shooters. I like this. You don't feel comfortable, reset, make sure everything's comfortable. Good spare. Hey, Tom. He did say that the uh, left was just a touch tighter. Thank you for that insight, Chuck. Left lane is tighter, according to Marcel. Here's Lenny. Good look at Lenny's full approach here. You also see our, uh, our championship trophy there as well. Great shot out of Lenny. All right, can Lenny master the left lane? The right lane, it looks like the ball is finishing greatly, slapping the six into the 10. What do you do here if you're Lenny? You bowl with this guy all these years. You know Lenny's game. What does he need to do to carry on the left lane? I know what I do. I scoop just a just a touch left, try to get just a little closer to the pocket. I think Lenny might actually cheat just a little bit right and firm up a little bit. There it is. I think you're right. I, that looks Let's like look what at the he ball did. speed. Yeah, well, not a lot harder, but uh, he, I think he definitely just cheated just a little bit right. 15.13 yeah. to 15.26. Just looked like he threw that one with a lot more confidence. Yeah, yeah. Lenny's not a posted at the foul line guy. Lenny's a step out to the right every uh, every shot. Just kind of steps out to the right. Um, that one definitely looked like he gave it the business just a little bit down at the bottom as well. Get a nice look at John Marsala here. Ooh, oh, that strike right there makes it a one pin match through five frames. Yes, 270 max for Lenny, 269 max for John Marsala. Let's the ball drop right into the swing. And that's what controls his entire approach and his timing at the point of release. That was a good one. See if you can add a little wine sauce here to the Marsala. What do you say here? <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, that's in. Oh, wow. A little bit of area there. Yeah. Well, I mean, if that lane's tighter... Like Chuck reported, you know, that's his miss. So oh. obviously it's got to be in if that if there, that lane's tighter. There's that Gary Ray shim too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and I mentioned this earlier also on the, on the last broadcast is is I think Marsala has got that muscle memory that when he does miss right, he can feel it at point of release, and, and he can make a slight, that little slight adjustment at the bottom to come up the back of the ball and keep it in line. Lenny, really good shot there. 
Well, to everybody at home and all of us here watching, including the fans, we've got ourselves exactly what we wanted right here. We've got a close match and a couple guys that are lined up on the pair and they're starting to feel it here. Lenny is 33% on this left lane after going wrap 10, wrap 10. Makes the perfect adjustment, gets the strike the last time. Parlays it for a triple up there on the board. And I think this, this shot right here on the left lane could be quite critical for Lenny. Also remember both players are allowed to re-rack. Sometimes those things start to come into play later in matches to kind of try to freeze your opponent or give yourself extra time. That's pretty good. High flush. Yeah, that one was uh, about as good as you can throw it. it and, and the ball responded perfectly for what Lenny wanted it to do. You can see it got into a really nice roll phase there yeah. in the mid lane. Got and it to roll up just a little bit yes, earlier than yes, the ones that 10 pinned. Yeah. Ball hitting the nine. Can't throw it much better than that. Marsala to answer. Looks pretty good. Again, I'm just so impressed with the work that Marsalis put into his game. You can really see how fundamentally sound he is. He's got that quiet arm out to the side, stays down. Popped out of that one a little bit more than some of his other ones, but uh, he's got a good look to the pocket here. It's a one-pin match right now, and the reason we know that is what you do is you had 30 pins there in the fourth to Lenny score. That puts him at 90, and if you look at John Marsali, he's got 89 in the fourth. You look at the strikes to the right of it, they're dead even, so it's a one-pin match advantage right now to Lenny Borish. 270 max for Boris, 269 max for Marsala. Another really good shot. Pured that one. I think he's even moved just a little bit further left on that lane as uh, Chuck reported it's getting tighter. Sure looks like he's cheating a little bit left and using that down lane carry down that, that Gary Ray gave John by using the urethane. And notice John stayed in the same ball. He did not ball down yet. He's still using that, that bigger ball. Yep, the face too, John's using. A little bit of surface on that thing, but here we go. Lenny Borish here, eighth and ninth frame. Can apply a ton of pressure here. That's oh, left. Lenny doesn't like it. Oh! Well, all, all, all is fair in bowling, right? Because we saw Marsala <clears throat> miss right on the left lane and, and flushed it. And Lenny, a little left here. You can see it right here on the slow-mo replay. Just a little left off his hand. He knew it, and that's when you just pray. What's going to happen? And boom, trip four. Hello, Daddy. Yeah. It's yeah, like we, a re-rack here. Yeah, we saw Lenny last yeah, year. Here's, here's the first re-rack. I knew this was coming. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry. Yeah, we saw Lenny last year get a couple of bad breaks, and Ron Moore catch a couple of fortunate breaks to uh, for Ron to win this event. Uh, you know, maybe Lenny gets a little bit of payback there. All right, big shot for Lenny. Lenny strikes here in the ninth. It does not matter what John Marsala does. He will not be able to shut Lenny out if Lenny strikes here. Lenny taking a deep breath up there on the approach. Will it hit? Will it hit on the left lane? Oh, red just a little early. Ball speed was actually even up a little bit. 15.63. That might have been, you know, just trying to, to catch it a little bit more to, to try to get the 10 out. Two ring 10s in the first and the third, but back-to-back -back strikes. His last two shot, that one creeps in high, leaves the 4, 7, 10. Big shot here. If he can run this down, if he can make it, if he can make it, oh, what a shot. So the max score now for Borish, 233. John Marsala, 269 max. Pacing 239. So this shot here in the ninth is massive. And Lenny took the re-rack and everything. He took the deep breath on the uh, on the approach. Did everything you're supposed to do to get ready to make a shot and did not perform in the ninth. Let's see what happens here with Marsala on the right lane. This is a high pressure shot for him.
Looks pretty good. All right. Ring, okay. Ring seven here. Ring seven. Important to pick this up. I did allude that in practice, he his first attempt at this did go into the left channel, and his right one would have barely clipped the seven. He did pick up the seven pins so far that he's left here in our championship final. He will be using his spare ball that is plastic to go cross lane. Uh-oh. Oh, no. got more of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Off his hand, I kind of <laughs> kind of thought he threw that one into the gutter. Yeah, it, yeah got way more of that than it, I thought he got. It's a little scary. It's a little scary watching that ball come off his hand, go cross lane. I, it's, all right, so um, if 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 John marks, let's say he goes nine spare strike, that would give him uh, two thirty seven, which would shut out Lenny Boris. Lenny Boris can get to two thirty three. So good good count and a fill here. Good count, mark, fill, I should say. Magic numbers 234 is what he needs. Looks pretty good. And a strike's going to do it right there. John Marsala is going to advance to the championship match to take on Jack Jurek. Here is the winning shot again on lane 19, and Marsala just continues to dominate lanes 19 and 20. This is actually going to be the lowest game we've seen him actually bowl on this pair. And he's still at least going to be in the 230s, maybe the 240s. Yep, two shots to get six. That's going to get it done. Boy, he looks good out there. And, and I feel for Lenny Boris here. That one shot in the ninth, which to you and I up here in the booth, didn't look bad. It seemed right on line. Something happened there. Yeah, he must have maybe, you know, just caught it just a little bit more, tried to get it to roll up. He had – that looked like the adjustment that he made to me after he went wrap 10, wrap 10. Looked like he just tried to give it the business, just be a little bit more confident with it. Um, two really, really good shots in the fifth and seventh. Didn't look like he missed by much in the ninth. Maybe maybe just a touch in. But as we saw, the ball speed was higher, but did not lay off down lane. Even the 4 7 10. Good shot by Lenny there. Lenny Boris going to come home third. He's going to take home $52.50, $5,250 for his efforts. Of course, $8,000 up top for the champion, $65.50 for second here at the Super Senior Classic. And this is back-to-back -back years where Lenny Boris has gotten defeated in the stepladder final, and I know that one's going to sting a little bit for Lenny. Yeah, that's uh, probably not going to be good for the rest of us coming next week. Lenny's going to be a little bit fired up after uh, that shot in the ninth frame as we go to the Senior Masters next week. But I just want to mention, though, we saw Gary Ray bowl 2 teen the first game, and then we saw, you know, Lenny Boris here is going to bowl 230-ish here, and, and those are going to be losing scores. Those are going to be losing scores here. And it just goes to show how good these guys are and how well they've matched up to this 39 feet in length oil pattern. Yeah, good shot there uh, of the sportsmanship of Lenny Borish. The high five and the hug to John. Well, all, all these guys have eaten John Marsala's barbecue out on, on, on the <laughs> PBA 50 tour. So, so it's, you, you can't disrespect the man because you won't get barbecue this summer. Yeah, right? John, John, uh, John's the smoker king out there on the PBA 50 exactly. tour. Exactly, and they all love him. They all love him. But right now, Jack Jurek, he may love John Marsala, but he's ready to take the title from him. He's going to have his hands full with Jack. Jack's been pretty solid all week. Jack knows the scores, though. Jack knows what John Marsala is doing here. Yeah, Jack's going to get on here. I, I believe he's going to get four practice shots on each lane. See what Jack decides to do. 
as we've talked about all week. Jack likes to throw the stronger early rolling balls. He's had a lot of success this week with a supernova. I believe that's the ball he threw 300 with. Been throwing a reality. His first couple shots here, though, with a UC3. Jack Jurek in a qualifying round in this event averaged 250. He, he took home the, the high score honor and went to the lead after the cashers round. Was presented with two trophies for that. So he's capable of averaging 250 at any given time on this oil pattern. But I do want to note that John Marsala, his last four games on this pair, his average is 257.75. That's pretty solid. So Jack's first two shots, the UC3, that with the supernova. And that was a tester shot. He wanted to see what was out there on the gutter. Well, both of his other shots were up the gutter, too. He's playing the, this pair further right than Lenny was. When when Jack was bowling his best, as we saw him come through here, he was, he was crossing about 9, 10, 11, depending on when you caught it in the block, and just kind of doing the Jack Jurek little fade to the right. And he was using a little bit stronger balls. Yeah, this shot he's moved. He's moved. Yeah, this is quiet. where. Yeah, he's, this is where he needs to be right here. Watch this. Yeah, that's over that 15. That should recover. No, it didn't hook. Yeah, it might that might be a little bit too deep. That was that somewhere was in between now to about five. The supernova is one of our stronger bowling balls, so it's going to want to pick up. I think if he's going to throw the supernova, he definitely needs to be a little bit straighter. He's went back to his bag and grabbed another ball. I'm going to go out on limb and guess this might be a reality. Sure is. Again, though, on the right lane, further to the right. I mean, he's playing this thing almost like cheetah pattern. <laughs> he's, well, I haven't seen him this far right in this entire event. Yeah, I wonder if he's trying to take advantage of maybe he thinks Lenny created some hold for him being a little bit further left if, if he's trying to play right. Let's see what Jack's choice is here on the left lane. It's kind of weird because when he was down there on the practice pairs, he was playing like 10 to 5, and yeah. now all of a sudden he's up the gutter with a different ball that he hadn't even been throwing down there. Now well, that's like 6 to 3 yeah, in I reality. And it still didn't hook. There hasn't been a lot of traffic on this pair, obviously, you know, with the, with the lefties in the opening match and now just Lenny out there. I am shocked that his bowling ball is not hooking or changing direction more down lane here on the practice shots. Yeah, I hope he's not getting paralysis by analysis here. Uh, hasn't thrown the same ball more than one time on each lane. Looks like he's grabbed the reality again. Yeah, Tom, he he uh, he never threw that UC3 down there on the practice pairs, and then the first two he, he struck with, but he hadn't thrown it since. That's some great insight, Chuck. I do know that he had he had used that ball some in qualifying. Threw a little bit last night in our match play. Looks like he's went further left again here. Yeah, he's going to have to soften up. I think for him to have a good chance here, he's going to have to throw it left to right and get it to shape. Light again. Yeah, he is two pinning like crazy on this left lane. Uh, Jack, <laughs> Jack just, I don't know if everybody heard that. He said, oh, yeah, I'm going to start because he, he likes the right lane better, which is the right move here. Uh, John's obviously got him a little bit different, but John has a really good handle on both of them. As we've mentioned, both players, it seems, have right, lane 19 tighter than 20. To start the match. We start with 206 competitors. We're down to our final two here in the championship match. The arrows are up. How about a round of applause for Jack and John? Winner of this match becomes the 2023 Super Secret Classic Champion. 
look, looks like he picked up the UC3 to start. I'm not surprised by that. That ball, from what I viewed while he was practicing, uh, definitely the ball that he had the best look with. And he'll be playing the extreme outside part of the lane here. Oh, that was left. He doesn't like that one at all. Yeah, that one was, a break. That one was tugged up the track there. You know what that shot was? That was one. I have no confidence on this lane. I don't know what this ball's going to do. I'm going to try to make it strike. Uh, he missed a good three or four left. Fortunate break. Let's hope he can settle down a little bit and relax and uh, make some good shots. Right now, you got to say advantage John Marsal with what he's bold on this pair, but at the same time, it's a championship match and everything changes when the pressure heats up. Yeah. There's a little bit of both as you advance. You get a little bit more comfortable with the lanes, but every match gets a little bit more important, uh, a little bit harder to relax. But John didn't look nervous at all with that shot. That no. was pretty darn good. He's Ten still, back. still in the phase two, which is the ball he's used the entire step ladder. We do know that he does have that hyped pearl that he can go to that also hits the pocket for him. It's a little bit more delayed hook, but he's been electing to stay in the same ball throughout the entire step ladder finals. John's been much more direct on this left lane. Asking for that one to hold, and there that's the Marsala. We're going to have to start calling that the that, Marsala. That is, that is, with the wine sauce. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Okay, the Marsala with the wine sauce. Yeah, every time the, every time the six is last to fall, that's the wine sauce being sprinkled over the Marsala. The chicken wing Marsala. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> that's some great insight. Yeah, 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 it is. All right, here we go. Jack right lane, come on. Let's, let's get to the strike pocket here, Jack. Now he's looked pretty good on this lane. Yep, now he's using Ball it. change. Yep. Man, this is the worst feeling in the world. It really is. Tournament leader. Couple of matches already on the championship pair. You come over, you get your eight shots, and you feel like you have air. Because uh, I guarantee you that's what Jack feels he has right now. Great spare. All right, so if he's going with this strategy, right, sitting up here in the booth, it's easy to do, right? It's easy to say what to do. If he likes this UC3 going direct on the left lane, he's just got to go up, stand far to the right, make sure he goes right up the lane, doesn't tug the ball, and hit the strike pocket. On the right lane, he's going to have to trust that other ball. Yeah, if he's going to open him up. Yeah, we've got some indecision, obviously, we can see here. Jack picked up a ball, set it back down, and grabbed a different ball, so... What a, a very unfortunate set of circumstances here. Okay. Jack deciding to go with the supernova again over here. Threw it on the right lane, went high. This is what got him here. And that's that's what we saw. We, that's it. That's a pretty good shot right there. Yep. And what he's doing is he's he's taking about the the tenth board and out out of play. He, yeah. He's he's really doing the. The 16 to 11, something like that, a tight inside angle, and now it's game on for Jurek. Yeah, the shot that he threw over there in practice with that ball, he got much further right on the lane and uh, did not recover at all. Oh, way oh in. he doesn't like that. Two four seven eight. Slightly harder spare than the three six ten that Jack left, due to the eight pin, standing behind the two. But not as hard as the four six on the other errant shot we've seen him make here during this final. Yeah, yeah. Getting sixth right there is a break. Uh, the only real negative from it is losing the three pins in count. Pretty good shot. Is he going to get it? Great that spare. That is a great spare. Under these circumstances right now, that is a great spare. That's the first time he's had to move a little bit further right and throw his strike ball over there. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's hard to be confident to get that ball far enough to the left for it to shape enough to get the eight out. Great shot, John Marsala. And, of course, for those that don't know Jack Jurek, he has the nickname Gentleman Jack. He was actually 
talking with John down there, right, the ball return, they were both laughing and talking about that shot. He's, he's, a, he's a perfect gentleman. Much better shot. Does not get the seven out. Well, if I'm Jack Jurek, I'm happy with what I just saw in the third and fourth frames. I saw Marsala squeeze one on the right lane and miss right. He did cover the spare, and now I'm seeing him have a little carry issue on the left lane. Yeah, now Jack's just got to get up there, make a couple of good shots, and uh, he's going to throw all the pressure right back on John. And how quickly things can change in bowling. Yeah, when John stepped up on the lane 20, he thought he was in firm control of this match. As Jack had thrown a Brooklyn and then went high, made a great ball change on the left lane with a really good shot, but now... The same ball, he 3 6 10 the last time. He didn't trust it. Yeah, he's going to make the adjustment. Scoot just a little bit further left. There we go. That's a really good shot. That's the key shot in the match right there. Jurek, take a look at it again here in slow motion. Yeah, I'm impressed by this shot. The fact that Jack took his time, picked up one ball, set it back down last shot, decided to commit to this, and then went and made two Great A shots. He went from being like shook to confident. Mm -hmm. I mean, he stayed down until the ball hits the pins and stared that thing down on the right lane. That's a pretty good shot as well. Oh, wow. Off his hand, that looked a little in to me. Needed to get a little bit further to the right at his targeting at the arrows because of how flat they are in the middle of the lane and the 39 feet in lane pattern with such an aggressive bowling ball and no real shim built in because of traffic. I thought that had a chance to go high. Executed well, but chance oh, to go high wow. because of targeting. And yeah, he misses the 3-6-10. And here we go again. It's like a ping pong match, right? Here, you take it. Here, no, you take it. Momentum back to Marsala. Yep, 95 in the fifth for Jurek. He can still bowl 245. Marsala can still bowl 265. The light swisher there. Light swisher on 20. He hmm. has... Not been doing that today. No, he has not been doing that at all. And that was after the last shot went high. Yeah, I wonder if that was a little bit of an overcompensation for the 2 4 7 8. But that could be bad news for Jack if uh, John's going to have the high flush trip in the six late and the uh, swisher. That means John's got a pretty big pocket to hit right now. The fun thing for us at home is I do feel like John's best lane now is the left lane and Jack's is the right lane, and they're both going to finish on their better lanes. Wow, where did uh -oh. these light mixers wow. come from? 15.90 up on the board for the, the shot before, 15.92 on that one. So he's, he's throwing it very consistently at 15.9. Hit him thin, watch him spin, I think they say. Yeah, well, John's got four shots left, and we talked about Gary Ray using the urethane. John thought it was going to be to his advantage creating hold. Those last two shots, it might be making it just a touch too tight. That one in again, Ugh. in and slow. I... I, I I don't know what to say because Jack is in this situation where he's got to be further in to get the ball to hook. He's got to try to make it hook, but if he is just slightly to the left or doesn't project the ball, he's through the face and paying the ultimate penalty now. With John's look, this is almost a must-make. Oh. Yeah, and this is really right now a battle of straight, you know, straight versus you know trying to shape it a little bit, and, and right now straighter is greater. 
So 224 still left for Jurek. It's it's not over by any means, but Jack is going to have to throw four or five in a row. Yeah, That's Jack's better, better. Doesn't get the 10, or does it? Nope. Nope. That one he did get to the spot. This is the worst ball reaction that Jack has had the entire event. Yeah. I can say that with confidence. Marsala with the wine <laughs> with the wine sauce tripping out the six. And he's back to his patented hit. No more light mixers for, for John on that one, and that is what we call a triple. Yeah, you could hear the ooh from the crowd when he let go of that one. That one was definitely right. I was just looking at scores. Any guess what Jack's low score was in this tournament coming to this point? Hmm. Oh, not 199? Uh, 196 he had one of the games yesterday. 199 was his low game in qualifying. Uh, just shows how hit the wrong pair at the wrong time. That's pretty good from John. Yeah, that that's classy. That looks very good. And John Marsala, he is rolling right now. Now four in a row for John. And that is... A great lane for him right now. Jurek up quickly here in the eighth. Looks like he makes a ball change, and that one hooks extremely sharp off the end of the pattern. This one's all but over here. John Marsala is going to take this thing home. Unfortunate for Jack Jurek to come over here and not have a look in this match. Find something in the third and fourth frames, but not able to repeat, not able to get his ball to shape the right way. And now uh, Jack just uh, kind of speed finishing here. Yeah, I, I still don't think Jack's shots in the fifth and sixth were all that bad. He was just, you know, a term we, you know, he was, he was bowling in a phone booth. He didn't have much room. He had to be perfect, uh, which he was in the, the third and fourth there. But uh, the momentum changed when he opened. Uh, Missing the 3 6 10. John's going to get a little bit of a victory lap here. Got that one. Quite a bit further left. Yeah, it didn't gave really that one matter. A little room yeah. down lane to the left. Leaves the nine. Don't go away, folks. We are going to have an interview with John here in just a moment coming up here on Bull TV. Appreciate you tuning in to the 2023 USBC Super Senior Classic right here from Samstown Bowling Center. John Marsala going to take the win here. Don't forget on deck, we've got the Senior Masters coming up all week long. Next week right here on Bowl TV. Make sure you tune in. How many players are in that one? 312. 312 sold out field. There's a waiting list to get into that thing. You're going to see the best 50-plus bowlers in the world participating. Well, two days ago, or yesterday morning actually, when John bowled 269 to sneak in to 12th place, you coined the phrase that he was on a free roll. Yep. He, he took that free roll all the way to the top. He sure did. He sure did. And, and, and this, this is a perfect testimony to when you're down and out or you're having a bad season or you're not bowling well, participating in whatever tour it may be or your local tournaments, that if you put yourself in a position to practice, work hard at your game, get your timing, your mechanics right, you can come back from it and you can succeed. 
John Marsal at this event beat Hall of Fame bowlers, some of the greatest to ever lace him up. Monticelli, Weber, his part, his buddy from St. Louis, uh, Williams Jr., Goble. The list goes on and on, and he is the best of the best here this week. Yeah, he advanced out of what we dubbed the tougher of the two groups, Group B. Had PBA USBC Hall of Famer Lenny Borish, PBA USBC Hall of Famer Pete Weber, PBA USBC Hall of Famer Walter Ray Williams Jr. All in that pod, John Marsala emerges victorious here at the 2023 Super Senior Classic. And he made every spare on the telecast as well. Tell me it doesn't mean something to him. I can see tears running down his eyes oh, yeah. right now. Yep. Uh, PBA 50 Tour title number three for John Marsala. Unfortunately, he lowered his average, though, in this championship game. That's the only thing I can say about the guy. You know, John, can't you bowl a little more than 244? Yeah, what a letdown. <laughs> what a letdown. Let, let everybody down. But, hey, let's uh, one more time give it up for Jack Jurek. Jack Jurek, one of the best guys in bowling and one hell of a bowler. He was the class of this field, and sometimes when you are the number one seed, it doesn't work out in your favor. We know it's about a 50-50 coin toss on whether or not you can do it. But you know what? Maybe Jack will, will take what, what he did here this week and he'll parlay it into next week and into the season and the events that he chooses to bowl on the PBA 50 Tour, which we'll have right here for you all season on Bowl TV. One more time for our second place finisher, Jack Jurek. Yeah, I'm very confident that Jack will take this uh, momentum from his finish here today. Use that Tuesday. Not sure what Jack, what squad Jack is on Tuesday for the Senior Masters, but he'll take that momentum. I'm sure Jack will uh, have a very solid week next week. Right, let's bring up our champion, John Marsal. Let's give it up for him. <laughs> this is a special one for me. I've known John for a long time. And uh, John, I want to, before we get into what happened here this week, I want to talk a little bit about last season on the PBA 50 Tour. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> John says no. We had some struggles last year on that tour. Talk about what you did in the offseason to get prepared for this event. Well, for me, speed is everything. I don't have a lot of rep range, so I really got to be focused on my speed control. And that's one of the things I've worked on moving back and forth in the year, so I just pull the ball down. And really just trying to stay.
All right, everybody. Well, uh, they're going to do the check and trophy presentation here in just a little bit, but uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, and wrap things up here from Samstown. We'll uh, we'll bring it into the booth. Mike and Tom here are with you. Uh, what a great event we had here with John Marsala taking this one down, and what a great set of competitors we had out here on the lanes today. Yeah, uh, heart goes out to Jack Jurek to lead an event for that long and to have to bowl one more game to win it and, and unfortunately not have the look. Um, you know, that just, that, that flat sucks. Um, but John still performed. It wasn't like John bowled 180 to win. John went out, averaged almost 250 right here in our, in our championship match and a well-deserved championship for John Marsala. Congratulations to John. I just love the fact that somebody can work at their game even even at you know the age of 60 plus and retool, sometimes you can give up and just say you know I, I'm good. I'll bowl a few events. I'm good. But he worked very hard, and to come out and win the first event of the season, boy, you can't draw it up any better than that. No, you really can't. Uh, as you mentioned, you know took took the last couple off, went home, worked, and uh, I've known John for quite a few years now, and you can really see the results of the work that he's put in and uh, took it all the way to the top. Yeah, stop he one. He sure did. So that's going to do it for us here at Samstown. Tom, always a pleasure to bring the, the coverage with you. Yeah, Mike, uh, enjoy the, working in the booth with you. Uh, been an awesome week. Going to be in the booth next week. Not near as much. I'm going to try to go out there and uh, knock some pins down. Now, somebody's giving me a, oh, hey. <laughs> Troy Popolar is from uh, Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, uh, PBA supporter. Host a couple of regionals. Troy's out here. He's going to bowl next week as well. But uh, sorry about that, folks. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to send with Craig Craig Elliott next week. Craig, Brian, Chuck Ritchie, and I are going to cover the action. I'm sure Craig will have some uh, guests for the squads that Chuck and I are in the booth. But uh, looking forward uh, to getting back out on the lanes. Uh, I've had enough of this watch and stuff. Let's get out on their lanes and knock some pins down. Yeah, good luck to you next week. And don't forget, Thank everybody, you. you can watch the entire USBC Senior Masters along with the PBA 50 Tour right here on Bowl TV. Make sure you subscribe to Bowl TV and watch everything live only on Bowl TV. we got a few people we'd like to thank before we get out of here. We certainly want to thank the USBC and their board. We want to thank the official lane maintenance supplier of the USBC who does such a great job, Kegel. Thank you to Kegel for oil in the lanes. And, of course, Tom and his entire team here at Samstown for hosting the event and many bowling events over the years. So that's going to do it for our broadcast here today. Thank you for joining us. I want to thank producer Brian Kane, of course, Chuck Ritchie, who was sidelining. I want to thank my broadcast partner, Tom Hess, as always. My name is Mike Flanagan. So long from Las Vegas here at Samstown Bowling Center. We'll see you on an upcoming broadcast right here on Bowl TV. And remember, on Bowl TV, bowling lives here. Have a good day, everybody.